I'm Fonzo. And I'm Aliza. And we're the co-host of Grown, a podcast from the moth that shows we're never fully grown. Growing up feels like a phase that should end at some point, but does it ever really? Whether you're 16 or 26 or 86, you're going to have to deal with family drama, your body, and the type of person you want to be. So why not put it all out in the open and go through it together? Join us every other week to deal with cringe, culture, and the courageous efforts of people like you to get grown. Start listening today. Follow Grown on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. Hey, it's Anita. Whether this podcast episode finds you taking a break from too much family time in the company of your own chosen family or back in the work week grind, I'm glad you're tuning in. Today, we're doing one of our favorite things to do on Embodied, listening in to conversations between parents and kids. This time, it's the stories of adult kids who in one way or the other are acknowledging the reality that their parents, no matter their age, are people in search of love, sex, and partnership. This episode comes to you from our friends at Dating While Gray, a podcast produced in partnership with WUNC. Enjoy the episode. I've never been a parent who's like, this is grown-up business and kids need to stay out. My therapist has told me that there's usually one of the kids that is secretly wishing for their folks to get back together. She'll have 40-year-old adults on the couch that are saying, I really wish mom and dad got back together. And I know which one of mine is that, so. Aside from my directional issues, do you have any thoughts on things I might be doing wrong and things I might be doing right? On one hand, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I think you're doing your best with the options you've got. (laughs) What does that mean? (laughs) When it comes to grown kids and their impact on gray relationships, I'll quote from one of my favorite songs. Some days are diamonds and some days are stones. This is Dating While Gray, the grown-up's guide to love, sex, and relationships. I'm Laura Stasi, and on this episode, we're talking with parents and grown kids, including one of mine. It's The Parent Trap. Some young adults don't like to think about their mom or dad as someone's romantic partner. Then there are young adults like this one. I'm Lauren. I live in Portland, Oregon. I know that every conversation won't be tailored to me, being 25 right now, but I enjoy every single story and every episode. My podcast life is very much about love, so I appreciate this. Lauren not only listens to Dating While Gray, she turned her mom on to us. I'm Gia from Portland, Oregon, born and raised, mother of two adult children. I'm a full-time employee, full-time student, My hobbies are pretty much anything to do with music and movies. Gia's had two marriages that ended in divorce, and she hasn't been eager to get back out there. Daughter Lauren thought Gia might need a little inspiration. Gotta love that. I reached out to learn more about this dynamic mother-daughter duo. So I met my kid's father when I was young. I think I was like 17. My home life was not great. I didn't have very many examples on what a um, successful relationship or a healthy relationship looked like. I think staying in the relationship after I knew it wasn't a good relationship at first, it was, I thought I was telling myself it was for the children. Like, you know, everybody says, you know, stay together for the children. It's going to get harder if you have to do it alone. But I felt like I was already doing it alone. So I think after a few years, I just finally decided it might be best to, you know, separate and, you know, focus on myself and my children. What you've expressed is what a lot of us feel, no matter how old our kids are. You Mm -hmm. feel like you need to make a good go of it because you want them to have, you know, both parents around. But then sometimes it just becomes impossible. That's true. And with the second one, it took a while before I got into a second relationship. And I think I got into it for the wrong reasons. I somehow thought, okay, my kids have gone like years without having some kind of, you know, father figure. And, you know, my son was a teenager by then and Lauren was younger. I say they're seven years apart. And I was thinking, okay, This person, you know, said he wanted to show up and be, you know, take the role of a stepfather. And 
that didn't quite work out. Oh. <laughs> he was not um, stepfather material, <laughs> at least not back then. Lauren, do you feel the same way? Do you think he was not stepfather material? Um. Well, now that I know the whole story, I mean, when I was so young then, it was different. So yeah, I, I definitely felt differently then. And I think now knowing what I know, it was probably a better story from my perspective rather than my brother's. Um, that stepdaughter, stepdad, stepson relationship. I'm like, there was very clear differences there. And so that's not what you want ideally when you're looking for someone to be a father figure. Yeah. Gia, was this anything you talked about directly or did you try to? Um, Honestly, I don't even remember. I know I had some conversations with them. Um, but looking back, I wish I had had more conversations with them. You know, because people, when they're in relationships, they don't realize that the things they don't think children see, they actually do see. Yeah. I remember the conversations. Um, I believe my brother had already become a grown up and left right away. Yeah. But I was in middle school still. And it was one of those things where the conversation was not heavy or anything. It was just, how do you feel about us all living together? Or how do you feel about this or that? And um, thinking about getting married, that kind of thing. So it's like, what do you think about that? And like, I will be give you my honest thoughts. I've kind of, I've never not been honest. And so, yeah, we've had those conversations. I don't know if she remembers them, but I do. I think relationships between mothers and daughters change, you know, as they age. But I can say from a young age, Lauren was more mature. I saw that already. She was more mature where she wanted to hang out with older people instead of her peers. Um, she was very intelligent, you know. So I think the relationship changes with age and, you know, I share a lot of things with my daughter. Well, she's got great taste if she turned you on to the podcast, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> So, Lauren, I'm wondering if now that you're an adult, would you feel comfortable talking to your mother about specific aspects of any relationship she might get into, like either red flags or something for her to think about? I'm definitely comfortable with that just because I know if I was getting into a relationship, I'd be able to go to my mom. So it's kind of like we have I think we have that there. <laughs> Uh -huh. And Gia, how do you feel about that? Do you want her to weigh in or? Of course, I welcome her feedback and her input. I trust it. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't give my opinions on anything unless I was asked. I've learned to have boundaries with my children. Like, okay, I'm not the mother. I can't tell them what to do and give them this advice. So I'm learning to just wait until I'm asked. <laughs> Would you ever ask, Lauren? Well, the conversations I have with my friends, of course, are going to vary between the conversations I have with my brother or my mom. Everybody gets different tidbits, uh, but I definitely am comfortable going to my mom for advice. And usually I can think of one other time when I've had a new relationship or I was going to start seeing this person and she's like, OK, well, I think that's a I think that's a good idea. Like just seeing a new person for me, I'm like, I don't really like meeting new people. Uh, <laughs> I don't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my mom's, like she's saying, she doesn't give unwanted advice, but uh, she's very encouraging, I would say. How I came to find out about you all is that, Gia, you wrote something on the Dating Well Great Facebook page, and it says something like you weren't quite ready to start dating again, but this would be helpful advice for when you are. So how long have you been single this second time? Gosh, I lose track of time because I got so much going on. I want to say... Maybe four years, approximately, Lauren? <laughs> Am I right? I mean, I couldn't even guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say four years. I know you're busy. I mean, it sounds like your schedule and your life are both full. But is there anything that's, I don't know, preventing you from kind of going back out there other than time? Yes. <laughs> so um, I honestly had um, signed up for a couple of dating sites and I was getting the same thing over and over again, like one word, you know, responses or 
you know, I like your profile or I like your picture, but like there's no substance. I guess I <laughs> I was like, am I asking for too much for someone to like write more than just one word or get likes? Mm. And I'm kind of old fashioned where I look for the guy to, you know, take charge or whatever or, you know, initiate, you know. So that might be part of the reason. Another thing is, um, I don't know, I just see what's out there. And I'm just like, I think the longer that I'm single and that I enjoy coming home to my own home and, you know, not having anyone to answer to, having things my way, I think the longer that this continues, the harder it's going to be for me to even open myself up to dating. Well, so it sounds like um, you've reached a point where maybe that you might feel like being in a romantic relationship would require too many compromises, compromises that you don't want to make. Um, I wouldn't say that. I think some of the things that I'm looking for it will take a little longer to find a partner because I'm comfortable being alone. I don't mind going to movies or music events or anywhere alone by myself, whereas I know plenty of people be like, what, you're going by yourself? Like, I'm comfortable doing that. Um, I like things my way. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with someone, but I'm just not open to like sharing a home with someone unless we have, you know, boundaries and they respect my time alone with myself, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not saying like, go away, but like, I like my space. <laughs> Lauren, is this news to you in any way? No. My mom and her ideal relationship would be, of course, someone else who is funny and loves music as much as she does personality-wise, but their home would be like a total butterfly house where everybody has their own everything on this side and their own everything on this side, and they like have dates in the middle. I, that's what I always imagine. It's perfect, too, because she loves butterflies. <laughs> I love that. I was going to say, did you make that up, Butterfly House? Because i that's a perfect visual. Well, I kind of associate with my mom because she loves butterflies, but that's how I picture her ideal relationship going. Like, they're not too far, um, but they have their own bathroom. They have their own everything over there, away from me. <laughs> I'm going to write that down because I think you've, I think, you know, <laughs> we're going to get some builders to do some butterfly houses because, you know, there's this whole thing about living apart together where people maintain their separate residences, yes. but the butterfly thing is so much nicer. Just meet in the middle. You're that mm -hmm. you're that far apart, but you can get together pretty quickly. Yeah, come together. Like we can have coffee in the morning. Yeah, they'll have to share the kitchen because she doesn't want to cook and he'll have to cook. <laughs> yes, the person that I'm going to be with has to be able to cook. <laughs> and, and Lauren, you were saying that, um, you know, you look at podcasts and you found Dating While Gray and you recommended it to your mom. Do you have a strong opinion about whether she should put herself back out there or just, you, you know, you've heard what she said about wanting her space and you know how busy she is. But at the end of the day, do you feel like she's, you know, missing out? I mean, she's really busy, of course, but the longer she stays in that, it will get harder for her to put herself out there. And I think someone else could make her really happy. But I also know that we are the same, that we do not have a lot of patience. And it takes a lot of patience to meet new people, take their BS, and, you know, get to know a new person. And you have to do that over and over and over again in order to find the right person. I don't think she's missing out, but I know she's probably going to make the right decision for herself. Dating takes patience. Oh, yeah. By the way... Lauren's in a relationship with someone she met organically. He's older, almost as close to mom Gia's age as her own. Lauren said she had no issues telling her mom, but she hesitated before sharing the news with her big brother. Clearly, Lauren supports any romantic pursuits her mom may embark on, but some kids don't, or at least that's what their parents signal. Are grown kids a reason or an excuse to be non-committal? We'll explore that after the break. Our next guest has a familiar name, Laura. She's in her late 50s, lives in the Midwest, and has three sons. She's also an adult child of gray divorce. She was in her early 20s when her parents split. 
after Laura untied her own marital knot, her kids' well-being was top of mind. I did date, but I didn't want to introduce them to anyone until I knew it was a serious relationship. I just felt that was extremely important that they didn't, they didn't need to know. They didn't need to get involved until it was going to be serious. Then Laura met someone through her cycling group. They started hanging out together, and their friendship evolved into romance. We were both divorced around the same amount of time. So it probably at that point had been around six or seven years uh, that he had been divorced. He's 10 years older than me. Uh, and his kids are about 10 years older than my kids. So you all, you have been friends and then it developed into a relationship. It sounds like, did it get serious quickly? Were you talking about marriage and that kind of thing? Or? Um, it got serious, but we weren't talking about marriage and we weren't talking about the next steps. And I think after three years, I was kind of like, okay, are we going to the next step? And what is that next step? Or what's this looking like? And he wasn't thinking there. He's like, no, it is, we're fine here. Did you know his kids and did he know your kids? We knew each other's kids, but there wasn't intentional sort of, hey, I'm going to include you in events. Because his kids weren't close by. My kids were kind of, uh, they're teenage boys. Uh, you know, so we really weren't formally including. Okay. So, yeah. So he, um, I wasn't included in like family birthday events. If there was some event where somebody had a birthday, no, not included. Or if there was something, uh, if they were visiting, they he and his daughter would go to lunch without me, which I'm like, okay, all right, she's in town just for a little bit. Okay, you know, but when does that come that point where you're <laughs> like... When you get included. Yeah, is it just... Yeah. Or like the son graduated from graduate school. I was not included. Mm. And we were, we were very slow and cautious about it. But yeah, it, um, yeah, for three years. And I think, you know, when kids are off, whatever, doing their own thing, but when they would be in town, yeah, it's like, hmm, hmm. And you mentioned that you had asked him to be your medical power of attorney. Right. Okay, can you unpack that a little bit? Because I'm thinking, okay, this is, you weren't living together. You were in a committed relationship, but you sensed this hesitation. So I'm wondering if you asked him to sort of test the waters. I guess I thought the relationship was at that stage where you, that that's who I would want to be there when it, you know, when you know me really well. And so he's like, yeah, you know, because like when you fill out those forms at the office, who's who's that emergency contact? And like I said, I have three boys. And they're not always one of them doesn't answer his texts ever. You know, <laughs> just who's going to pick up the phone? And so, yeah, I did ask him to be because one of my kids had actually had a very serious accident and almost died. And so it's like, OK, hmm. you know, this can happen. And he said yes, but then it wasn't reciprocated. It sounds like his kids were not the reason why he didn't want to commit. You know, I'm not 100% sure on that either, Laura, because there was one time there was a dinner and one of the kids did not attend the dinner because my kids were there. And I was like, oh, and I think it was it was a celebration and we we're going to try and have you know, some of the kids together, somebody, a celebration of a new job or something. And they just were like, oh, they, they were like, I didn't realize Laura's kids were going to be there. So I was like, oh, well, what, what was that about? What, what's that about? You know, and it was just never really discussed. It was like, oh, that's just the way that person is. And it's like, what are we doing here? So I felt like maybe there was still... One of the kids, even though they were, I mean, this is just what I, I felt like they just weren't ready for their dad to date again, maybe. Laura wasn't getting what she wanted, so she made a clean break. Shortly after that came the COVID-19 lockdown. Laura had a lot of time to think. Over the next several months, and with the help of a therapist, she crafted, let's call it a relationship vision statement. Then she reached out to her former friend turned lover, and they met to discuss possible next steps. He and I talked about what had to happen and what were the things 
you know, it had to be clear. It couldn't be, I'll think about it or I'll get back to you. It had to be clear, like within 30 days, there's the power of attorney. By the end of the year, living together. I had a coworker that she, she's been in a relationship for 15, 17 years, something like that. They'll never live together because there's one kid in each of their families that says absolutely not. So there you're giving the power to the kids. And I was like, I'm not doing that. We're not doing that. So I didn't know for sure if there was a kid that had power, but that wasn't, I was like, if that's what's happening, we're out. There are so many different iterations now of what commitment looks like. And some people don't want to live together 24-7. But for you, it was important to live together. Yeah. And maybe it comes back to love languages because I'm around the quality time. So that was my definition. How did you talk about this with the kids? So all the kids are on their own. No kids are living with you. Yeah. And he had to tell his kids first that because it was kind of, I felt like he hadn't really had that conversation. And I think he said that the relationship was going to move forward. And I think they, from what I understood, they're like, yeah. (laughs) So, you know, and um, I told my kids too, and I kind of got a, yeah. So I think we maybe worry a little bit more about it than they do possibly, but I just, I didn't want any surprises with the kids either. And I remember telling them, you know, we're going to be moving forward. We're going to be moving in together. We're going to be buying a house together. I didn't want to be alone the rest of my life. And and you've met him. He's a wonderful person. So yeah, it was, it was all good. It's never going to be like this Norman Rockwell, right? They were raised differently in different homes. It was different circumstances how the divorce ended. Mine was not as amicable as his was. We also did do, not this last summer, but the summer before, we did do a vacation of everybody, and it went really, really well. We hope to do that again. Blending families, it's these are adults. They're on their own. It, it's going to be a lot. This is going to take years, so... We're not going to rush it. Living together is important to Laura, but being legally married is not. And remember her partner's kid who didn't join the family group dinner? Laura says she's come to understand that maybe they were going through their own stuff and the absence had nothing to do with how they felt about Laura. So while the lockdown forced solitude, it seems to have eventually led to a better place for Laura and her relationship. Speaking of the pandemic... According to one study, the coronavirus led to about 32% of millennials and Gen Zers moving back in with their parents. One of mine did. Let's call her Sunny. She's in her late 20s, but full disclosure, her move wasn't precipitated by COVID-19. She was relocating to the East Coast for personal reasons after about eight years in the Pacific Northwest. And she was with me for only a few months. Sunny and I are both uncoupled. And as it turns out, we were both taking a stab at online dating. I thought she could offer some help, and she was game to talk on tape. So one night, I read her a message I'd received from an online suitor and asked for her reaction. He wrote, Ha, I never thought of that problem. I get the same exact thing from BWI. The reason we connected is that I'm in Rockville through today for training, And my company, HQ, is in Reston, although I never go there. And the quotes. And you're adorable. Those are the the reasons, I think. Okay. I thought it was funny, no? Yeah, yeah, it was good. You didn't... I laughed out loud. I think I have to read it. Can I... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never thought of that problem. I get the same exact... Okay. The exclamation helps. Okay, (laughs) My company is using red and I never go there in the quotes. Intro adorable. Okay, yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay, so, uh, okay. It, that's effort. So did you have any negative female reaction to adorable at our age? At our age? <laughs> <laughs> at my age? I mean, I didn't, but I didn't know whether adorable is adorable. would be considered. How old is he? He's my age. No, that's fine. Okay. Can I see a picture of him? Well, hold on a second. Then I wrote, yes, traffic stinks. Next time, I can't offer you a place to stay, but happy to meet you for a walk and talk. Okay. Then he wrote, ha, I was thinking I would move some of my stuff in. (laughs) That's good, right? Yeah. He still lives really far away, though. Let me just show you his picture. Okay. 
Uh, let me, how do I, how do I look at all of them? Just scroll. Okay, I see. We had to cut it short because Sunny had other plans. But a few days later, we continued our conversation. Her cat wasn't too happy about it. You may hear it in the background. I asked Sunny if it felt weird to be living with me again. No, I don't think it's a weird thing. I think it's kind of fun that we can both relate that we're not in similar stages of life, but maybe kind of a similar transition. You're temporarily living with me. Um, you did not know what your what your full-time situation would be, but you knew it was going to be a temporary thing. But we didn't know how long it was going to last. And as it turns out, you're going to be, I think by the time this airs, you will be in your house of your own. So try to think back when you, when we first sort of made this agreement, did you know then that you would be dating or trying to date? Mm, It wasn't a priority that I would be dating. I think I approached it more so thinking that I'll need an easy entrance into having a social life again in a place where I don't really know many people anymore. Um, so that's kind of how I was looking at just to kind of shake up my friend group, meet some new people. So, Mm -hmm. but I I wasn't like, I'm going to be finding a partner (laughs) while I live with my mom. Did you have any thoughts about whether I would be on a dating site? What that might mean for you? Um, I thought you might be on a dating site, but I didn't think that I would be like subjected to you bringing people over. I mean, I, it, that never made me uncomfortable either because our dating lives are very separate from our lives when we're at home together. Okay, go on. Well, I do remember we had an agreement that was prompted by you, just where you were like, hey, just so we're on the same page, nobody's bringing over anybody for slumber parties. <laughs> that helped me relax because I was oh. afraid. You were so I was afraid that I would have to share a wall with you and your lover. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think you're being sarcastic. <laughs> but that would be weird, wouldn't it? I if mean, I, yeah, it would be weird. If I, I didn't know the guy, yeah. So you and I happen to both be on dating sites. Mm-hmm. Are, do you have any thoughts on the one you chose versus the one I chose. Um, The one you chose confuses me. I don't know how to use it. (laughs) Um, I, I don't like the constraints of it. When it comes down to it, it really is just flicking through pictures, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I agree. You told me something. So I have a terrible sense of direction. Swiping right means you're interested. Swiping left means no. But okay, if anybody wants to try this at home, when you swipe right, your finger starts at the left. And that's what confuses me. And so you gave me a great tip. Yeah. You just putting them in different buckets. But yeah, I mean, to anyone out there who's about to realize that they've been swiping the wrong way (laughs) all this time. (laughs) As Laura Stassi was. Yeah, was totally. So you said, like, think of it as piles, and the pile to the left is the bat, you know, the reject pile, for lack of a better word. And the pile to the right is the pile that you're interested in. I'm really interested. I don't suspect that this will be that common of a problem people are having, but I'm (laughs) interested to find out. Aside from my directional issues, do you have any thoughts on things I might be doing wrong and things I might be doing right? Okay, so that one night when we looked at your dating app together, yeah, I would say you're leading with too many words. Mm. Like you were kind of saying like, you know, these apps are also photo based. And I would say work with that. And you can, you could, you know, you could even just look at the photos of a profile and still be thoughtful about you really think so? You're interested in, yeah. Hmm. I think you can tell a lot about a person based on which pictures of themselves they choose. Okay, so tell me how you translate that into your dating life. Uh, no mirror selfies. No mirror selfies. Doesn't matter what's written. <laughs> uh, <gasps> what else? 
How about selfies in general? Selfies in general? Like if some, like, am I against them? Yeah, because it seems to me, it feels to me like if somebody only has selfies in their profile, that means they couldn't get anybody to take a picture of them. Yeah, they're never doing stuff with people around. Yeah, Mm, yeah. That's a good point. If it's like only like really close up pictures of their face too, that's Mm. concerning. (laughs) I think people probably just have some more baggage at your age more marriages and children than people at my age but I think other than that I'm tempted to say it's pretty similar Mm. you know basic like good behaviors bad behaviors Hmm. good behaviors bad behaviors just like you know if somebody is very thoughtful about making a plan and is very communicative or like versus if somebody trying to make a plan with them is like pulling teeth I think those probably occur with the same frequency Mm. across age groups. Mm. What are you looking for? Be more specific. What do you mean? (laughs) I mean, do you want a committed partner? Eventually. I think we talked about this a little bit when I was looking for a house. And I was lucky that, or I am lucky that I've been able to live at your house in the meantime while I've been searching And I was kind of saying to you, like, I don't want to, you know, make this huge commitment unless I just can't believe my luck. And I feel the same way about dating. Sunny, gone too soon, out of my house and into one of her own, about a hundred miles away. Oh, well, that's closer than the Pacific Northwest. Sunny is so excited about her new place and believes it might be her forever home. I'm her mom, so of course I'm happy for her. But like a lot of other single parents, I've learned that huge commitments don't necessarily last forever. Thanks so much to Laura Stassi and the Dating While Gray team for sharing this episode with us. Dating While Gray is produced in partnership with North Carolina Public Radio WUNC. If you want to hear more from them, well, you know what to do. Follow their show on Apple Podcasts or subscribe on your podcast app of choice. We'll be back with a brand new episode of Embodied next week about workplace relationships. We think friendship happens organically, and in adulthood it doesn't. When it does happen organically, it's because we're seeing someone repeatedly over time and their shared vulnerability. So we have that at work. We see people repeatedly over time, but there's not often vulnerability. A lot of the time we're only sharing about the work and we're not really talking about who we are as people, which is why one study found that spending more time together at work is linked to being less close, which is just so, so wild. Join us for that conversation next week. Until then, I'm Anita Rao, taking on the taboo with you.